In my opinion, one of the most underrated lures today is the simple inline spinner. It catches all varieties of fish, all sizes of fish, and it works in the hands of all ages of angler. Me. <laughs> today on Retro Bassin, we're gonna take a look at one of my favorite old school spinners, the original Warden's Rooster Tail. And we're gonna take it on the water and see if it still catches today. Stick around. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. As you can see, I'm here with my Bassin bud, Waylon, and we are gonna do a deep dive into one of my favorite old school baits, the Warden's Rooster Tail. This is a bait that I have fished with probably since I was his age. And to be honest, until I kind of dove into the research for this episode, I did not know a ton of the history on this bait. But it is definitely a history worth telling, and hopefully you guys enjoy this little retro bass and journey. Most of the information I was able to find on the rooster tail came from two different sources. One was the Yakima Bait Company, and the second was a 2015 obituary for Howard Warden, who was the inventor of the rooster tail, and one of the owners of the Yakima Bait Company. I'll go ahead and drop a link to that Spokes Interview online article. It is definitely worth a read. But before we get on the water with the rooster tail and see if we can catch a fish or two, let's talk about the history of this old school fish catcher. Warden's father, R.B. Warden, founded Warden's Floating Spinner Company, which became the Yakima Bait Company in 1941 selling handmade fishing flies and wooden bass plugs. After World War II, when U.S. servicemen returned from France with spinning equipment and French inline spinners like the MEPS, Warden tried his hand at an inline spinner of his own. Crafted with a weighted body, will leaf blade, and hackle tail, the bait was first dubbed the Retreat Special, but the name was later changed to Rooster Tail after Warden watched a Seattle hydroplane race on TV. The rooster tail was sold only regionally until the 1960s, when news of the lure's effectiveness spread nationwide. After some Florida anglers brought home some rooster tail samples from the Fishing Tackle Manufacturer Show in Chicago, Illinois. In addition to the rooster tail, Howard Warden developed other Warden's classics, like the Spin and Glow, the Lil Corky, and the Vibric Rooster Tail. I do have a tackle box uh, of some new school Warden's Rooster Tails that I've recently picked up. And I've also got some vintage Bass Pro Shops fishing catalogs here with some really cool spreads on the Warden's baits. First catalog we're gonna look at is this one, which is the 1978 Bass Pro Shops Master Catalog. And the first thing that you appreciate is that the rooster tail deserved a full page spread back then and it got it. Okay, here's a pretty glorious one page spread on the rooster tails. Uh, as you see, they were sold uh, for the low, low price of 79 cents um, off a list price of $1.50, which still ain't bad. What else does it say here? The Warden's Rooster Tail trademark, live action hackle tail and a slow retrieve design. Looks like this bait came in three different sizes in 1978. Uh, first off, the smallest one is a 1 16th ounce. There's a 1 8th ounce, and then also a 1 6th ounce. And it looks like it was available in 10, oh, pretty tasty old school colors. I kind of like the purple. That's one I do not see anymore. And man, I, uh, I like that one a lot. Also available in 1978 was the Super Rooster Tail. And for my record, this is actually one of my favorite ones. You notice it kind of looks like a little mini spinnerbait. And I feel like this one has one of the best retrieves of any inline spinner. Um, maybe because it's not inline. 
but you could get a quarter ounce uh, Super Rooster Tail for 89 cents. Not too bad. So, all right, that was the 1978 catalog, and the next catalog in the list is this one, the Bass Pro Shops 1985 Master Catalog. Well, Rooster Tail held a firm with their one-page spread, which is awesome. And looks like we have the same sizes, uh, the three different sizes of the original inline spinner, uh, that one quarter ounce super rooster tail, but boy, it was offered in a lot more colors. Uh, there's some really nice ones on here though. I like that metallic green, that looks pretty sweet. The chrome with yellow tail, ooh, that natural stone fly. And I think that Waylon, I think we've got one that looks kind of like that. Oh yeah. We got the crawdad. Uh, the Natural Bumblebee, Natural Hopper, Natural Shiner. Man, there are some definitely uh, some pretty old school gold looking colors on this page. But either way, that is the spread for uh, 1985. Looks like the price went up a little bit, but every one of these is still under a dollar and 50 cents. Pretty good price. <laughs> it is a pretty good price. And then moving on to the final catalog in my collection. Uh, at least as far as Rooster Tales that will show, it is this, the 1986 Master Catalog. And I included this one in this episode because it has actually a couple of different varieties of the Rooster Tail this year. So Rooster Tail still had a one-page spread. It uh, looks like the original Rooster Tail was now offered in five different sizes. That's pretty cool. I think all of the same colors from the previous year but notice this nice little addition at the bottom of the page, the Vibric Rooster Tail. I actually don't have any Vibrics in my collection, but this is a neat one, the Vibric Rooster Tail. It has a unique offset body shape combined with a direct blade to shaft rotation, and it makes it the most noisy spinner in the water today. Uh, the intro price for that one was $1.66, and it was available in an eighth ounce and a quarter ounce. All right, that is it for the spreads of the Rooster Tail. They were definitely available in subsequent years in the Bass Pro Master Catalog. The spreads did tend to get a, a little bit smaller and not as many new variations, sizes, or colors were introduced. Waylon and I have a box of Rooster Tails here. We have a pretty good variety of both sizes and colors. I'll give you a look at it before we head on over to the river or creek to see if we can catch a bass or even a panfish. So here is the spread of rooster tails. We've got the, uh, the smallest size on up to the quarter ounce. And I think I know which one I'm gonna use, which is this one, always one of my favorite colors. It's a gold blade and sort of a flow orange coach dog pattern. And Waylon, you already called yours, right? Yeah. Waylon is going with this one, uh, that natural green. Check him out. All right, guys, well, we'll follow us over to the lake. We will see you back here in the studio to do a little recap on the day. And I uh, guess I better get these on. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, got one. What, you did? Oh. No fair. <laughs> oh. oh, it's a bass. Oh, it's a bass. <laughs> Oh, got a little bass. Oh man, come on, buddy. <laughs> wow, it's big. Yeah, get him in. What? Great job, Dad. All right, got a nice little bass on the warden's rooster tail. That was, I think, my second cast in this little spot. So nice little uh, springtime largemouth bass for this creek. I didn't know if there'd be any fish in here. We have uh, not been too successful in this little pocket of Onion Creek as of late. So it's kind of cool to know that uh, there's some fish still in here. Check him out. And he hit one of my favorite colors of all time. It's like a sort of a flow orange coach dog on top of chartreuse. Awesome. Yeah, got a fish. All right. Got a fish. Take your time. Go. Take your time. Go. Is it moving? Yeah, it's Good. moving. Oh, it's a fish. What? You got a bass. Yes. Keep I going. Get him in. Ah, let's go. 
<laughs> Are you strong? Take your time. He's coming. Yay! Oh, wow. Same one you got. So, Waylon just got a nice little bass on the old rooster tail. Man, good job. Thank you. Oh, now, get the hook out and you can hold him? Yes. All right. That guy was pegged right in the bottom of the lip, and Waylon is using sort of a, I don't know if that's like a grasshopper color, but it's a really cool green. It's the one that he picked out. Nice. Yeah. It looks like, it kind of looks like your fish almost. It does look like my fish a little bit, yeah. So pretty cool that we've got some life in here. This is actually a great sign on the day. We've only been fishing for about 15 minutes or so. So the fact that we got two bass uh, on these little spinners is awesome. I'm also glad we're using this bait. I feel like if there is a fish that swims, it will hit an inline spinner and it doesn't matter what species or what size it is. These fish, I think, might not have come if we were throwing some of our more traditional soft plastic spitter baits, crank baits, things like that. But it's definitely cool to get a uh, little tug on the rod. Man, nice fish. Thanks. You ready? Toss. Yeah. There's a little lake east of town, headed that way, hammered down. The water calls on me from time to time. Phone turned off, music cranked, put the boat in the lake, start her up, I know I'll be alright. Here's to ripping lips, not breaking tips or falling out of the boat. Dragging line and doing fine, making some beer cans float. All I need sunshine time tackle box and some fishing twine here's to ripping lips not breaking tips or falling out of the boat here's to ripping lips not breaking tips or falling out of the boat Do I have a fish? Look how small this guy is. What is he? Uh, a sunfish, looks like, kind of. <laughs> How's this guy even alive? Nice, he's got a little sunfish. Yeah. That is a little sunfish. Yes. Check him out, did he hit hard? No. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a beaut though. Yeah, it's super cool. Surprised he got that spinner in his mouth, he's so big. I know. <laughs> nice fish. Oh. Oh. oh, he went in. <laughs> Just slap on the ground. Well, it counts as a fish, I guess. It does. You're up. Two to one. <laughs> All right. Well, I never like to get out fish, but we were a little bit short on time today. So uh, Waylon got that little bluegill at the buzzer and Beetle Retro two to one, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at this bait real quick. Give you some of my initial observations on this. Uh, I've obviously fished with this for, for many, many years, so nothing too new. But having done the review on this lure, looking at the history of it, it definitely got me thinking about Howard Warden's design and maybe what he was trying to accomplish when he made this bait. First off, there are definitely three components to the rooster tail, which I think definitely differentiates it from other inline spinners. And the first and most obvious is that willow leaf. I love a good willow leaf, and I've got to admit, some inline spinners I have don't always spin. Especially for me, some of the brands, if you sort of don't reel them at the right cadence, they sort of just plane along the surface like this. The rooster tail definitely engages very well, and that probably has to do with that willow leaf design. Second aspect of this bait that I do love is the fact that it's got a weighted body. This is actually a little piece of lead that has been painted, and this definitely helps the rooster tail get down. We've got a couple of different sizes. This is the size that I was using, which is the heavier one. And then Waylon had this one, which was the lighter. Both of them fish very well. Waylon was able to fish his a little bit slower, and it wouldn't necessarily get as deep. But that is the second component of this bait, and yeah, I definitely like that part of the rooster tail. 
I also like that it allows them to do some eh, fun little stuff with the color patterns. But the third and probably most distinct part of the rooster tail is just that, that hackle tail. I don't know, but there is something about this little tail that is magic in little creeks like the one we just fished. It has just got a really good look to it. I know some other inline spinners have more of a sort of fiber-like tail that doesn't undulate as much. This thing definitely moves in the water. And yeah, for whatever reason, I feel like I get bit on the rooster tail much more than most inline spinners that I fish. Well, hopefully you guys are enjoying these little historical deep dives into some of the various lures out there. Definitely drop a comment down below and let me know what old school lures have uh, been uh, neglected and maybe which ones we need to do a little retro history of here on the channel. It has been a fun ride on the old retro bass in a wagon and uh, it is kind of fitting I've got my little bass and bud here because we are on the cusp of a pretty big milestone on the channel and that we are at right now 12,998 subscribers. So if we've got two more Bass and Buds out there that go ahead and smash that subscribe button, old Retro Bassin will be a teenager. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Um, and I definitely appreciate uh, each and every one of you guys who tune in every weekend and absolutely love the comments. I read each and every one and Respond to pretty much everyone if I can. If you guys are looking for more old school content, click right here. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place. Until then, fishing old school! <laughs> fishing old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. <laughs>